Hey there guys, I'm going to do a quick video just to show some things that I made while on a short holiday. Uh, I'm currently in Tokyo, Japan at the moment. I'm away from my usual UK location. So Japan is great. Uh, we'll probably come here again next year because I do know the AI community here is buzzing. But back to this uh, video. So I put together a very quick agent that can review any Google Docs, review the content of Google Docs. And the reason why I did this is because around 5% or 10% of my responsibility, my day job, or just me as an AI practitioner in general, is to look through articles or um, any blog posts that are, that are written before they're posted by other writers. And by look through, I mean, do a review technical review, editorial review, and whatnot. And on holiday, I still had to do some of this, but I realized this is a task that a an AI agent could possibly automate and could possibly do it. Because most of the changes I recommend writers and other practitioners to make on the articles are repetitive. They're nothing unique to me. They're knowledge you can find online. So I, I believe this is something that I could, I guess, agentify. Um, so essentially this video is about how I am building an AI agent to replace me at least 5% to 10% of me. Um, I already worked, already played around with agents previously to build, um, an AI, uh, an AI agent researcher. I didn't create a video on this, but I do have, a uh, the full code that shows a process of creating an agent researcher that can actually go into archive and search for, um, specific research papers or get information on research papers. But this is not what this video is about, but if you want a full agent, just like I've mentioned, you can go into this, uh, MongoDB developer, Genai showcase, go into the notebooks folder and go into the agents folder. You'll be able to see this fireworks agent, AI agent built with line chain and MongoDB. So this specific agent is an agent with a memory, um, and the memory allows it to remember what it's done previously, which can improve future outcomes. But let's get to the actual agent I created to replace myself. And this agent is very simple. The, the, the objective is for me to give the agent a link to a Google doc. And I want it to conduct a review and not entirely, not edit the, the actual content, but just leave the review. Uh, the reviews as comments. So I'll just talk through the process, a very high level. Then when I get back to the UK, I'll, I'll do a full fledged video explaining the process of building this, but very quickly, um, building agents, agents need me tool, and you can see me playing around with different type of tools. So the, the most difficult part of building this agent was not even the, the, the implementation of the agent itself, but the tools and how to structure the tools. So you can see I have uh, this array of tools called independent ed editing tools, and I have uh, another array of tools called tools. So one thing I played about with is breaking up the, fun the general functionality into several components and making those each tools. And also experimented with doing all of the functionality within one large um, robust tool tool definition and both works, both actually work, but I think breaking down the functionalities, the functionalities into specific tools is much better. It, it, it sort of brings in modularity in your tool definition and that can allow you to debug easily as well. I will talk more about the, the method of tool definitions and how you should identify processes and break down operations within processes into specific tools. I could talk more about that later, but I'm still learning. But one thing is I just have a very simple tool. The agent needs to authenticate itself to get access to the Google docs, then get the actual Google doc itself, process the content and then insert comments. And these are the general tools that the agent needs to accomplish its task. Um, while I was in Japan, I was, I was in Japan for about three weeks or so. Um, OpenAI released GPT-4, uh, um, GPT-4.0, 
And, um, so I'm using that and I'll talk more about GPT-4 when I get back. And I'm using that as the main brain of the agent. And then moving on, we can just specify the prompt for the agent, which just sort of um, stares the agent into the specific role we want it to play, which is essentially an editor of technical articles. Then we have a placeholder for inputs. Um, I'm using Langchain, obviously, as um, the LLM framework, the abstraction framework for building the agent. So they make everything very simple. And we have the message uh, placeholder um, constructor, which basically is going to be the agent scratch pad. So this is like a short term memory for the work or, or the working memory of the agent. And next we go into actually defining the agent itself. I'm using the agent executor. Um, and now I'm just going to simply call the, create the agent using the create tool calling agent function, specify the, the brain of the agent, which is GPT-40, the tools, which is the independent editing tools and the general prompt that stares the agent into the role we want it to play. Next, we will define the agent executor and assign it the actual agent, give it the tools we want it and specify some additional parameters mainly for the, the level of login and also how to handle errors. But one thing you can notice here is I've commented out the memory function, the memory functionality of the agent. So this agent cannot remember things it's done previously. I'm still experimenting with, with this functionality. So this agent is not complete, but even a complete uh, showcase of how memory can work with an agent, this notebook does exactly that using MongoDB as the memory provider and every conversation within a session that is had of the agent is stored and it uses this, uh, let's say this form of memory, which can be a long, long-term memory to give better outcomes. I will go through this in a future video as well, in terms of memory. Memory is very important for agents. Then finally, I just give the agent a very simple instruction, just to tell it to make a technical review on this document, I give it a specific um, link, which is, uh, which is a Google Docs link. So I was going to create an agent to actually extract the ID from a link, but from experimenting, the LLMs, the AI can actually do this by itself without specifying it. And this is one, a very good, uh, functionality or shows the, the functionalities of large language models where, where they're able to do certain things without you specifying how to do them. But I did have to tell or in, instruct the agent to use the authentication tool first. Um, this essentially you can't access a. Google Docs without actually um, making sure it's authenticated. You want to access it through the API. Um, next, essentially, is actually to tell the agent what to do, which was to read the content of the document and suggest changes that can be made to improve the content at specific parts. So when you're doing a review of technical articles or articles in general, there are specific, you want to be making comments and addressing specific parts for improvement. So the agent needs to do this. And next, I also needed to specify to the agent that the comment that is added should be in a specific format, which is to specify the line and the changes to the content before and after. So essentially, for some reason, the Google uh, Doc API cannot, doesn't allow you to make inline comments. Um, which is a restriction on the, on the API. I think there's some work going on to change this, but that's not going to happen. I don't believe that'll be happening anytime soon, but it will be very, very useful if Google can allow, um, or at least allow through API access, the ability to edit Google docs and create edits as suggestion is instead of actual edits to the document itself. Um, and the last thing is. From experimenting, I, I noticed that I wanted the agent, I had to tell the agents that he had the ability or the permission to leave multiple comments as well. So this is still experimenting with the, with the base, with the prompt that will get the agent to be useful. And the last step is just to involve the agent. And as you can see from the output, 
it was doing pretty well. Uh, don't worry about the author authorization code. They, it, it expires. And the token as well, it, it all expires. But you can see it leaving, going through the, the document, um, which is right over here. The Rise of AI Agent is what the document is titled. Um, and this whole document, the content of this document was created using ChatGPT. I just gave it a very simple prompt to create this um, article. It's not, I've not checked it. Most of the content is, might be relatively, might, might be wrong. But that's not the point. The point is to leave comments on this document. Um, so we can see it, this line in yellow is the content of the document itself. And it gets the full document and it can start actually using the insert comment um, tool to start putting comments in the document with the changes. And it's using my um, identification to do this actually. And by the end of the, of the, of the functionality or the, the session, it gives an output of, of, it gives a log of what it's done to show the finished result. Here we go. So here we can see, just going to move this over here to the side. Here we can see the comments, right? Line 20 specifies a line where the changes are to be made. Um, specifies what the changes was and specifies the change to be made. And it does this for maybe five, uh, looks like four different comments. And I also put a typo purpose, purposefully um, in the document to see if we'll pick it up. And it did. So it just, again, suggests a, a way to improve the typo. And this is just the first step in replacing myself, at least 5% of the things that I do on a day-to-day -day pro on a day-to-day -day basis, which are very repetitive. They take time away from me. I do enjoy reading content from other, um, writers, AI, uh, writers and authors because it allows me to improve my knowledge. Uh, but this can just be the first pass before I have to step in and do more of a of a more rigorous and I guess human directed pass of the, of the article itself. It's not perfect. And I literally built this within a few hours. Most of the difficult part of building this agent was logically thinking about how to construct it. How do I compose the tools together? Should I create one unified tool or break them up into bits? Um, also understanding the process um, and how to split those up into tool. And I know there's a lot of talks about Asia replacing humans. It might not happen very, it, it might happen in a few years because I'm literally replacing my, replacing one aspect of myself now. Um, but I really think we, we practitioners, developers, AI stack engineers that are building those tools need to actually replace ourselves first, at least a part of ourselves before we start building tools to replace others, because this will allow us to understand the impact that we're making within industries that we might not be part of and what people on the other end might be experiencing. Um, so what am I feeling now that I know I could build a tool that could replace 5% of myself? Um, some form of relief, to be honest, um, I'm not worried that this is going to take the entirety of my job um, because there is a creative element and a specific unique element to editing articles and making um, technical articles uh, take a certain direction that you want it to. But we, I, I do need to go through this process of replacing myself first before building tools that could replace others to allow myself to understand the process of building agents understanding how to identify use cases for agents as well, and how to identify um, manual processes that we humans do in our day-to-day -day task. And also, like I mentioned, understand the impact that I could be making on people's lives and how to communicate it and, and, and maybe even talk about it or limit any sort of consequences that comes from it. But if you want a, a full written code, um, you can look into this repository, um, which has a, um, an actual AI agent researcher that can go through research papers and users tools, connects to a database to use as memory. And, uh, this is more of a full fledged, um, agent. And one thing I would like to ask as well, if you made it to this end is to just, Hey, just like, or start this repository, share this repository. 
because it will be getting updated with loads of notebooks and, and information for people to use to build LLM application. And that's it for this video. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.